And when you do skin tones, you always want to start again with colored pencil. You want to kind of work to develop the shaded areas first. So I'm coming in with a sienna brown, which is one of the colors that I figured on using with my, uh, my skin tones here. All right, as a shaded area of the skin. So I'm looking at the contour lines that are drawn in. I'm not pressing hard, all right, because I want to be able to overlap the colors. And I can see that the bottom of her hand, there's a little bit of value. This is her shoulder over here. So I know I'm going to be using the shirt colors around here. So I'm just putting in a little bit of a shaded area. Okay, probably around the hairline, there's going to be some shades. A little bit here underneath the nose would be a little bit of a shadow, right? Because you can see the shadow under the nose because the light source would be coming from the top. You notice there's no line on either side of her nose. It's just a little reference there. Okay, because the light's coming down from the top, that means there's going to be a little bit of a shadow underneath her eyes. Well, above her eyes, underneath her eyebrows. And probably a little bit around the jawline, below the lip, and so forth. So I just carefully, lightly put in some of the values. Now, the other colors that work really well for skin tones, all right, that was Sienna Brown. And again, the number on that, 945. The peach or light peach, there's a couple different options, are always good and cream is always good. I want you to figure out, depending on which type of skin type you like to use, how you're going to create it. So you've got spaces around here that you could try to work on developing skin tones. But again, you want to work from the darker values and then based on the light source, you can see the top of the hand, the bridge of the nose, All right, there's going to be some secondary tones. All right, so I'm putting in this warm goldenrod color. Goldenrod's a magical color because it has so many really strong uses when you're working with colored pencil. So I'm kind of overlapping around the eyes, underneath the eyes where there'd be the eye socket, a little bit under the nose there above the lips. Okay, and then the chin in here is kind of a medium value. You can see the chin through the finger there. And then I can put some of that goldenrod in overlapping here. I'm going to leave some of this light. But if I overlap the goldenrod in that sienna brown, I get a nice shaded version of a skin tone. And then, of course, when I want to get to a lighter skin tone, I could put some light peach in. Not everywhere, because I still want to maintain the highlights on the... Oops. I still want to maintain the highlights on the hand with some gradation. And I want to maintain some of the highlights. All right, kind of working it into the middle values along the forehead. So I'm following the contour of the forehead here, some hair above it. All right, so I'm going to work back. But I want to work from the background in. I don't want to just kind of randomly color. So I can see there's some shadows around here. I'm going to have some shadows in there. Bridge of the nose is going to be light. And I can take some of this light peach off. I can come back in with the cream color now. And the cream color can I can put in as an area of accent, area of light. See that nice warm cream color that I'm doing a little bit of burnishing in some of the lightest areas of the skin but I'm not scribbling over the whole thing. I'm still leaving the marks open. Okay, I've got some of those other light areas of the skin down in here that I can overlap with the peach, or with the, with the cream color. And if I need to go back in and add some more of that skin tone throughout, I can do that. And burnish a little bit on the hand to make that bottom edge of the hand a little bit darker. Obviously, again, I did her hair violet and blue, so I can kind of work some of that violet into the shaded area of the hair. Her hair was blue. Whoops, oh well. Oh, maybe I like that hair color better, and then it matches her shirt. That's why I can do, that's what I can do on this. I can choose to do things differently. And then if I decide, you know, I'm going to come in and put the pink, just the pink shirt, or the violet and the pink. What can I do in the background? Instead of having anything in here that's a scene or anything like that, 
I could just do something in the background that's a neutral and maybe something that is a solid since it's such a small space. I could do a solid background with this slate blue so that the focal point is just the character. So let's say I wanted to try to figure out how to do another skin tone other than white. Well, what I could do is I could think about any darker toned skin. And obviously I don't want to jump in with a solid color. I want to do this sim something similar to what I did here. I want to build from the dark shaded areas to the light. So what do I have here? I got dark umber, it's 947. And that's a nice medium brown. That would work really well if I was going to develop you know, a darker shaded skin tone on this character, I would use that as the darker areas. Now I've got to be careful because again, in this case, I can see that the light source is coming from the top because a lot of the shadows are below the form. So if the light source is hitting the top, the top of the knee is going to be light. So I want to just use this to kind of find those areas of tone, middle value, all right, I can't get too dark. So the highlight's gonna come across the knee, down along the front of the shin. It's gonna pick up on a little bit of the back part of the calf. So I'm just putting some of this in really lightly where the darkest areas are gonna be. You can see there's a lot of contour line in here. So I know that the movement in there is gonna kinda go in that direction. So I'm just putting in some of those darkest darks on this brown skin tone. Now if I come in with Similarly, what I did over here, and build over top of that darker brown, just with the overlapping technique, I'm not overdoing the pressure, and then create that gradation where I have the middle values. I can leave some areas highlighted along the top of the knee, along this area that I know is gonna have some lightness to it. And I'm gonna put a little bit of overlapping techniques with some more pressure in the background here. I'm going to do the same thing. Overlap a little bit of that. And then just put a little bit of a gradient to where I know that the highlights are going to be. This area would be a little bit more dark. The top of the knee would be a little bit of a lighter value, kind of gradating from the shin bone as it goes up to the top of the knee. Maybe I can put some more darks in with medium pressure to create a little bit more contrast, you know, down along the sock here. And then I could overlap it again with that brown a little bit. That's pretty good. Just nice overlapping technique. And I'm creating the gradation, that smooth transition up to the highlight that would be running right down the front part of the leg. And now I want to accent that with, again, something that is not a pure light. So I'm using that cream color again. And I'm overlapping areas with a little bit of a burnish in some of those medium values. And up to the highlight, so it's mixing with those two browns. And it's creating a nice area of highlight, but still maintaining that look of a darker skin color. So I'm burnishing, not over burnishing. You know, I'm just kind of accenting with the cream color and burnishing in these areas just to create contrast, shadow, and highlight. 